Thank you for tuning in to TalkWad.com, the world's fastest growing internet radio network. Please check out all the other great shows on www.talkwad.com. You are listening to RockSlamRadio.com. From all studios to the world, we bring you the finest in quality entertainment. So grab a groupie, throw some horns, and settle in for another fine show from RockSlamRadio.com. This is the T-Bones Rock Show on RockSlamRadio.com, where each week I bring you the finest, most talented bands, musicians, and anything related to the live music scene in the Tampa Bay area and beyond. Hello, everybody. Thanks for listening here on the T-Bones Rock Show. My co-host is here with me tonight, Mr. Jim Gravely. He is the Morocco Mole of Rock Slam Radio. Morocco Mole. Yeah, do you remember Morocco Mole? Does anybody remember Morocco Mole? No, what is oh, that? Secret Squirrel uh, Sidekick, yeah. Each week we have a sidekick, and Jim doesn't know who he is. No, no, no. I, 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 I got keep it Mr. That way. Green Jeans. Mr. Cream Jeans, yeah. No, green, not cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> tonight on the show, we, our special guest is Soulmate Smiling. That band consists of five very seasoned musicians, each in their own right. Together, they are, have approximately 70 years. That's a long time, guys, of experience performing publicly. Oh, this project is approaching <laughs> its third year, and actively, they are actively seeking new and exciting places to play. What's an exciting place to play, Lisa? Lots of people, lots of dancing, really into it. Energy. Energy. Energy, right? Energy. Yeah. Uh, members of Soulmate Smiling are Lisa K. off to my left. Say hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> Troy Perella. Peralta. Peralta. I'm sorry. Peralta. Peralta. Yep. I, I get my tongue busted. <laughs> Peralta. And in the background, we have uh, Joe Gregory howdy, on howdy. bass. Yeah. And he'll be able to see him in a few minutes here. And Mike Spensley on drum. Hi. <laughs> and Rafael Aquinto. Aquino. Aquino. I did not say that Good right. On keyboards. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. I'll get it wrong again next. I'll just call no you by word. your first name. I got the first names right. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. If I get through that, I'm doing good. To talk with the members of Soulmate Smile and call in at 727-597-4022, or you hit us up on Facebook at T-Bone Entertainment, hit the like button, type in your questions. Uh, Jim's here, and he'll read them and type something back, whether you like it or not. And weep. <laughs> and weep. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa K on vocals. And you were born in Wellborn, Florida? I was born in Ohio. Oh. Uh, yeah. I know. Oh, oh, wrong where Lisa. At? <laughs> where at? Columbus. Yeah. But since I was eight years old, uh, really? I've been in Florida, and it's a tiny little town called Welburn. It's sandwiched in between Live Oak and Lake City. Oh, Florida. you're up north way quite a ways. Wow. You still live up there? About, no, we're oh. in, Joe and I are in Port Ritchie now. Yeah. Okay, very cool. I was going to say you drove a long ways. Probably yeah, the we longest drive any of my guests ever had. <laughs> no, <laughs> you'd get really tired, would you? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm from Ohio, too, if it matters. Oh, really? Yeah. Where We're both from? Buckeyes. Hey. I'm from around the Akron area. Have I you? don't remember much. I remember snow angels. What is a Buckeye? Isn't that like it's, a useless it, nut? It is. <laughs> <laughs> and all of us useless nuts come from Ohio. <laughs> hey, Wait, hey am, no. I right, am I right, hey Lisa? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm from there, too, I so it's to. okay. <laughs> and how long has the band been together, Lisa? Uh, this project's been together about two years. Um we yeah. were woodshed for the first year, so we've only actually been uh, gigging out for about the past year. But you we're say, gaining momentum. You said woodshed? Yeah, we've actually been practicing. practicing in a woodshed. Well, no. Well, <laughs> considering our house is in the middle of the woods, I guess you could possibly call it a woodshed. No, yeah, there's some streets there. <laughs> Lots of trees. There's a little river in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, we're in Port Ritchie. Yeah. Did, did, that, did that happen when, when uh, Joe said, Let's go out to the woodshed there, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a, <laughs> and, say, and it was love after that, right? Oh, pick yeah, me your switch first. Me right first. off my feet there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find the pan. Where's the pan? 
<laughs> I can't, it was that hickory <laughs> log you got her in there, you know? At least you didn't say outhouse. Oh, <laughs> true. <laughs> well, we have indoor plumbing. Oh, That's good. Yes, we do. You, you, yeah. now, you don't live in Polk County, so you got yeah. indoor plumbing yeah. in Pasco. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I apologize to everybody from Polk. I was just going right. to say, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got kinfolk from Polk here? I don't think anybody, do you? Frodo does, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, His a, wife and sister, she's from there. Uh, I'm sorry, Fredo. <laughs> Tell him I apologize. Have him call in and I'll apologize personally. I don't have a wife or sister. <laughs> and you don't even got a backyard. <laughs> I don't even have a garage. You could ask my wife. <laughs> Lisa, what are some of the uh, kind of music you guys play? Uh, well, <clears throat> funk, R&B, um, Mainly dance music, but we're we're exploring going into a lot more of the Motown vein. Very cool. That's sort of I love my favorite Motown. Thing, I love my Motown. Thing yeah. to sing, we were so. close to Detroit, weren't we? I was closer than you were. I could get CKLW. It was an AM station uh, when it was real clear at night, and that's a Detroit station. Mm-hmm. And I lived right below Cleveland, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was kind of cool. That's why I really got got involved in music. You know, listening yeah. to that at night. I don't know. Um, my dad. Used to be, uh, he had his own band in Columbus, and he had a call-in radio show where it was a thirty-minute block, and people would call in and do requests, and his band would do them live on the air. Oh, very cool. So, and he used to do like the Ohio State Fair, and of course, he did all the bars and things too. <clears throat> so That's how you little, got your musical background. It's uh, hereditary. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> did definitely. your mom sing? I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, she passed away when I was young, so oh. I, I don't really remember. But my my dad groomed me from the time I was like three <laughs> Very cool. um, to be in front of people and on stage. I yeah. remember um, when I was young, remember Hee Haw? Hee Haw. He had the Charlie Pride and the, you yeah, know, the yeah. Merle yeah. Haggard and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Buck Owens. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I got to kiss Grandpa Jones on the cheek one time Very cool. when I was real little, sat did, on his knee and did kissed you, him. It, it felt like plastic. It kind of freaked me out. Did you wash your lips immediately after you uh, used some of that no, gel was, or anything? Uh, no, oh I just kind of like, I looked at my dad like, Bleh. He doesn't and taste like, right. Yeah, you know, he was really old. <laughs> so his skin felt like plastic. That's why they call him disgusting. Grandpa Jones. <laughs> Sorry to all his living No, it was all good, Lisa. Like, it's all good, believe me. <laughs> he thought the same thing when he kissed him. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, my brush with fame was I touched Liberace's car one time in Las Vegas. You scared me there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, I threw the car in there, you know. It was yeah, yeah, I was like, <gasps> yeah, he offered me some candy and I took it. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, hey, who's Adele. your favorite vocalist? Adele. Adele. All yeah, right. without a doubt. Now, when you're driving around your car, uh, who do you got on the radio singing? Adele. Yeah, I mean, Adele. You're selling. I mean, I heard you sing a couple of things here. I was very impressed. Thank um, you. Do you listen to uh, Detroit old music from Detroit Motown stuff? And yeah, we oldies? do. I, I like a lot of the ones, but I, I'm not into. I mean, for me, it's the soul and it's the feeling and anything that you can really put yourself into. I don't. I don't enjoy singing songs for the sake of just singing them. If I, you know, if I select a song, I mean, the band comes together and selects songs, and I'll do things that I might not have chosen. You know, uh, for the you know, take one for the team, right? <laughs> um, I, might, I might sing songs that I wouldn't have chosen, but honestly, if I choose a song, it's because it's something that I can totally feel when I'm doing it, and mm-hmm. that, that's what I get out of it. It comes. So. It, the feeling comes out of you. Yeah, absolutely. Whether it be sad blues or happy, happy. Right. So, yeah. Right. That's very good. Um, tell me about the Incognito Lounge in Apollo Beach. <laughs> it's a very interesting name. You guys yeah, played there, right? Uh, yes, yeah. we did. Was We're everybody uh, Incognito? <laughs> yeah, you, you got <laughs> pretty much yourself. <laughs> back door, quiet. Back door, blackout windows. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> very cool. Stop it. <laughs> did they have rolls Secret of paper towels and uh, lotion? Can get us a job there. <laughs> If they're listening, they're going to kick handshake. your bike. No, I'm sure it's a great bar. No, they're wonderful people. <laughs> yeah. They, it they is. really are. They're really close to our hearts. Yeah, you know, quite honestly, we're Kevin. we're kind of targeting more of the the restaurant vein mm-hmm. versus the bar right. scene. Uh-huh. Uh, we're all kind of, uh, you know, we don't like real smoky places, sure. and um, we're trying to go, you know, high end, big, bigger, bigger, nicer places. Obviously. There's a bar up on it's a it's a chicken wing place, kick, Kicking Wings in Hudson. You guys heard it? Mm-hmm. Kicking mm-hmm. Wing, wing yeah. yeah, it's on Fifty Two there. Mm-hmm. That's kind of a, the restaurant atmosphere, no smoking, and uh, it's got a nice stage there and everything. Um, 
a good place to play. Write that down. Yeah, I'll write that down. I'll I'll give you some. I'll give you some notes for later tonight. I do the booking, so (laughs) that's right. (laughs) Look me up. Names, phone numbers, email addresses. I'm good. And you, uh, like, when you go to do booking, do you go into a bar and just listen to a band and then talk to the owner, or what do you do? I'm a little unconventional that way, which is this is going to sound funny because here I am on a, a talk show. I don't like talking. No, I really don't. You're doing like a great talking. job at it. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm way outside my comfort zone. I don't like talking. I you can put a microphone in my hand, and tell me to sing. I'm fine. Okay, you'll do some of that too. A little talking bit. is uncomfortable for me, oh. and and booking was very uncomfortable for me. Mm-hmm. The thought of it kind of paralyzed yeah. me because uh, it's kind of like selling, and I'm not a good salesman. I hate rejection. I don't like rejection. I just hate rejection. And also, you know, I'm the type of girl, that, like, even in my day job, if I feel like I deserve a raise, I say, you know, why aren't they paying me? They know I deserve it. I don't want to have to mm. ask for the money. They should just give it to me Correct. because yeah. I deserve it. And it's, it's the same way when you go and you try to, you know, push yourself yeah. as a band or buy me, sell me, love me, you know. Yeah, so right. it's kind of um, Pay me what it's I'm worth. uncomfortable. Pay me what I'm worth. It's very yeah. uncomfortable yeah. talking about money. It is. Oh, yeah, me. it is. For very me, it very is, too. Mm-hmm. For me, it is very much. Troy. Yes. <laughs> Wake up down here. <laughs> you see him come to attention. I like getting people off guard like that. You're from Norfolk, Virginia? Yes. Yeah, I got that one right. Yep. And uh, you were born there? Um, No, I wasn't born there. I was born in the Philippines. But... Okay. Yeah. Well, that's cool. But and... I grew up there in Norfolk, so that's pretty much most of what I remember. Was your parents Norfolk. military? Uh, my dad was a uh, mining engineer. Okay. So kind of I was thinking around. Norfolk. There's a there's an army base not too far from there. Yeah, Navy base. Navy base. Navy huh? base. Navy base. There's a Navy base. Big Navy yeah. base. And w- and how old were you when you came over to the Pol- Um, Pol- I was seven. Seven. Mm-hmm. Seven. Yeah. It's been a long time. And did you start playing guitar when you lived in the Philippines or or when no, you were in Norfolk? It was when I was in Norfolk, um, uh-huh. senior year in high school. After I guess after that, I kind of got um, interested, um, and then I just continued playing. You played at school in uh, some kind of a band? No, I um, I picked it up in high school just uh, watching friends play, and um, I joined a band when I went into college, uh, original band, and um, and then later on cover band. Um, but yeah, and I pretty much continued playing from that. Yeah. From that so what what on. what inspired you? I mean, was there a certain song you heard, or you just seeing your friends play? I'm sure there's a song oh, there yeah. somewhere. Yeah, it was, was it? Uh, Shortest Straw by Metallica. Ah, <laughs> all right. I knew I liked this guy. <laughs> that was the first song you played that on was, guitar. That was, that was what really inspired me to keep going. You Very know, cool. I, mean, I got interested when I heard one, but then uh-huh. I, someone was uh, playing the rest of the album. I was at a friend's house, and I heard that one. I was like, oh, I got I to gotta learn this song. Mm-hmm. So. Um, so I played that, and then you know I was kind of steered toward electric for a long time, mm-hmm. and then um, I migrated to acoustic. After that, I... Uh, it's funny, because some people usually start out acoustic and migrate to electric, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually the other way around. Yeah. But I migrated to acoustic, and I stayed on acoustic, mainly because I learned how to play drums at the same time while oh, I was wow. by playing guitar. So you so, play other instruments, too? Um, No, no, just this. Well, just this. The but drum. I, I you said the drum. Here, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. You're the percussive. bongo. I do have percussive. He's percussive? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He doesn't need me. Yeah. Yes, oh, I do. We all need you. <laughs> we all need you. They it need you. Really what entertainment you. would they have without you? You know. <laughs> that's right. That is true. Yeah, we yeah, need that's right. yeah. Um, are you, you're like self-taught, or did you take lessons? Pretty much self-taught. I mean, I I took probably a um, couple of months worth of lessons when I was first starting out. I I learned from that teacher. I learned some scales. Cool. That's about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, but that's but how to apply them and all those things. I really didn't catch on until much later. I mean, I still remember the patterns, mm-hmm. and I'm, a, I'm pretty much a pattern player, so you know, I, I know where G is and basically, you know, mm-hmm. but I can't, like, I can't read sheet music. Do you use tabs ear. at all? I, I learned, let's see, the first tab I learned was uh, When the Children Cry mm-hmm. by the White Lion years ago, and I, I learned that so I could learn how to finger pick, too, so that kind of that was the, the reason for me choosing that song. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I learned tab from then, but then I, I stopped using tab for who are some of your other influences besides metallica well um let's see during my electric years i was leaning toward following um it was van halen and um nuno betancourt from extreme who was it those are my two favorites who was it last one you said uh nuno betancourt he's from extreme uh, okay they had they, uh, their popular song was more than words which was a ballad but, okay yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah 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 but then he played a, you okay. know, a lot more stuff he more plays at rihanna words. now every now and then okay um, and then when I went to acoustic, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, I guess Tuck Andrus is is one of he's not a real 
well-known guitar player, but he's one of those that plays multiple parts on the okay. guitar. So kind and, of a technical type player. Yeah. You're kind of a technical type player too. Uh, in in some ways. Yeah. yeah. He I is, think we all are. Is. We are. That's good. Yeah. That's I kind of picked that up. You know. Have you played with other bands also? Yeah. You can, I, it's okay to tell them. <laughs> like, what? Well, they know everything. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's moonlighting. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's moonlighting. Everybody's this moonlighting. Is true. Yeah, we, yes, we are. Yeah. What's, what's some of the other bands you played with? Um, I play with, uh, let's see, just not not actual full bands, but just like uh, uh, individual people. I mean, I played with um, for a little bit Meredith Marsh, but she was here, and she moved to Roanoke, so um, you know I don't get to you know jam with her as often, but. Um, just other folks who go, who I meet up with at open mics. I mean, whoever is willing to jam. Um, Mary Beth King is another person that I, I jam with. Um, yeah, so Betty Fox. Sometimes I, I'll jam with her too. If, if, I'm uh, I'm not pick, I don't, none of those names ring, ring a bell for me. Local, They're local, yeah, people. local people from Port Ritchie? Um, no, uh, from Tampa. Okay, so yeah. you you live in the Tampa area, I think. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you guys have been around to the different venues and stuff in Port Ritchie. We haven't been too much in Port Richard. We've had a couple. We did um, Whiskey River once. We did Skinny's once or twice. We got rained yeah. out. Mm-hmm. But uh, since Mike and Troy both live in the Tampa area, and um, you know, to cut down from them having to drive so far, most of the stuff that I've booked has been in the Tampa area. Very good. Yeah. 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 How's the crowd base from Tampa to Port Richie, Pasco area? Is it different crowds? Nobody wears a cowboy hat in Tampa, do they? No. <laughs> it's a big, yeah, it's very I, different. I say that. I'm sorry, Jim. I wear a cowboy straw hat sometimes. He does. <laughs> but I'm the only one. He has done that. Yeah. I'll be the they only one wearing it. <laughs> so you get yeah, a hat cool. for each county, right? <laughs> you go up to Polk County, you put the decal <laughs> hat on. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can put my motoring cap on. Monster truck um, hat. Yeah, your monster yeah, truck hat. Yeah. Your NASCAR <laughs> my, helmet. My touring cap. Sure. Uh, Troy, if you could play with any band... I don't mean you got have to leave these guys, but with any band that you wanted to, who would that be? Oh my! We could pick um, two or three if you want to. Let's see. Um, I would say the, uh, the Dave Matthews Band. Um, that would have been mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I would. Uh, Extreme would be another one I'd love to jam with. Um, so many uh, Foo Fighters. <laughs> Foo Fighters. That's good. Yeah, Foo In that order, right? Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Very> <laughs> now, you guys are you guys set up to do a song here? You don't have to move mics. You can. Uh, let's see. Everybody's got a mic, yeah. right? So we're cool. Yeah. Oh, I have to swing this one. Out. He, you can. Can you use that one on your on your bass or your, your uh, we have this one over here. drum? Okay. All right. So I think we got enough mics. Um, can you guys go ahead and play us a song? Yeah. Whatever you want to do. Your choice. It doesn't matter if you can yeah. sit there and yeah. sing. You got to stand up, sing. No, I don't have to. Well, honey, stand up if you have to. Go ahead and switch seats out for the next two. Okay, you can do that. Yeah, um, yeah we'll go ahead and do that. We're going to play musical musicians here for a little bit. So we need Mike. Uh, well, he can't play drums and come over here, too. That's not good. Let's let him play the song first and then switch. She can switch over. It's cool. If she can get through there, it's all right. I just want everybody to get a chance to be on the camera so everybody can see you. Wow. Tripwire. You can go back and see yourself. Tripwire. Yeah, tripwire. There's a claymore down there. There's a claymore. You just <laughs> took his ears off. I'm sorry. <laughs> Front toward enemy. You did a great job, Lisa. <laughs> what song are you guys going to do? Should we do Survive? Yeah, it'll reach. Yeah, I think it'll reach all the way to Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear? Can you hear? Oh, yeah. I can hear you. Can you hear me now? This is Soulmate Smiling, and we're going to do... I Will Survive. You Will Survive. First I was afraid, I was petrified, kept thinking I could never live without you by my side, and I spent so many nights thinking how you did me wrong, but 
I grew strong And I learned how to get along And so you're back from my space I just walked in to find you here With that sad look upon your face Should've changed that stupid life Walk out the door Just turn around now Cause you're not welcome anymore But you're the one who tried to hurt me with goodbye Did you think I'd crumble? Did you think I'd lay down and die? Oh no, not I I will survive Oh, as long as I know how to love No, I feel like Excellent. Thanks. Very, very good. Very, very good. nice. Thank very Thank smooth. You. That was great, you guys. Um, Bob, I'm um, Joy Joe. Can you, Joe, Joe Bob, uh, Joe Bob uh, can you come over here? Skip on over <laughs> here. Can you skip on over here to this Pilgrim. here chair so we can see you on our TV stairs? <laughs> and next load the next uh, one. I got to put my cowboy side. hat on. Um, and then is Why there any the way that right Mike, you could make it over to his yeah, chair? Sure. Okay, that'd be cool. You don't have to take your drum with you or anything. Or if you want to, you can take your drum with you. So we might do another song here in a minute. If you want to take your drum, go ahead. Watch your step we need a bigger studio. If no one, if you're listening, we need a bigger studio. But don't raise the rent. <laughs> okay, let me get out of your way here. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, a commercial or something? Yeah, that Eminem thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Isn't that one of the guy I work out? Watch me work that, that Yeah, I work out or something like that. Yeah. Stuff up Are you guys okay out there? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm really fine. making it's the right Do you want us to get you that seat? I'm good. Uh, I, I, if I cross over, I'm going to like start to untangle everybody up. So <laughs> There's going to be a lot of electricity yeah. out there yeah. here in a minute. Uh, Joe, you have yes. a couple of custom-made bases 
an Ursula 5 and a Tongue Fretless, which you're holding right now. Yeah. Um, the one that I'm playing now was uh, made for me by a guy by the name of Nicholas Tongue, who used to work for Michael Tobias. Um, I acquired it in 1994. Um kind of off of an ad in the back of a magazine and uh <laughs> one thing led to another and uh I kind of had it sight unseen. I kind of knew what it was going to look like, but I didn't really know a whole lot more about it. I knew what the wood was about and everything. And uh I pulled it out of the case for the first time and I was like, "Oh man." <laughs> like, "Oh my." Cuz it's it it seems to seems to get a lot of attention. It's a sweet <laughs> looking guitar, it really is. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, you'll see oh, some pictures of that online. Oh, thank after you. We don't want to show. Thank you. Um, the other one um, was the Ursula Five was uh, made for me by a guy by the name of uh, Ben Chafin. Uh, ben has a guitar guitar repair at Tampa Bay with a gentleman by the name of Mick Donner. Um, ben had been making custom basses and guitars for years, and um, we had gone back and forth about, you know, what, you know, he kept saying, what do you want? And I'm like, well, you know, let's just, and I said, just, you know, just uh, make me, you know, just, you know, pull it from your heart, man. Just make me something from the heart. And he did. And uh, it ended up being the prototype uh, Ursula bass. Um, it's got a cherry wood top or a uh, rather a cherry sunburst finish over a um, quilted top. And uh, it's just, it's an amazing bass. It really is. I mean, it's, it's not fretless, is it? Uh, no, no, it's not. No, mm -hmm. I, I primarily uh, play fretless with uh, Soulmate. Um, oh, playing fretless, I mean, you got to know where you're at. Could you play a fretless, Jim? Have you ever tried? Not a, not a guitar. No. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be a little bit harder. Yeah. I, it's, it's amazing. I've seen a guy that had all, uh, he had all fretless guitars. I forget where I was at, concert somewhere. Yeah. It's pretty impressive stuff. I mean, you know where you're at. You could close your eyes and play, right? Yeah, or you do? It's, it's, it was at some of the Jedi training I had. Um, <laughs> it was the forces with I, you. Yeah, that's uh, they shipped me down here, and they said, "Here, use use your talent, make make it make it work and for it, you." And it did work, and that's what I did. Very cool. Um, that's no, nice, nice looking. Thank you. Yeah. No, I just uh, I I had played upright in college. Um, when I went to school, uh, everybody in the music department wanted to sound like Jocko. Jocko Pastorius. Everybody was, you know, like, oh, you, do you know Jocko Licks? Do you know this? Do you know that? And I'm like, no, not really. I came from a totally different vein, you know. So one um, one semester I went home and I went out in the garage and I got a pair of pliers and I yanked all the frets out of my Rick 4001 <laughs> and just pulled them all out and then I played it and I was like, yeah, this is a whole lot better. I like is this. Is that some kind of an anger management thing? Uh, yeah, it was, actually. <laughs> I was, I, the, You're okay now, though, right? Nothing against Rick's, you know, I love Rick's. <laughs> You're okay. You're okay. <laughs> you know, just that particular You've been one. you I hope. <laughs> you know, my Chris Squire days were over after I, uh, <laughs> okay. that was it. Joe, so. you're somewhat of a motorhead, right? Somewhat? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I, uh, I am... Um, what do we, what do we drive right? What do I drive? On, and does I she drive, help you wrench on them? I have a well. Right now, I've got a I've got an import tuner. I got a Mazda Speed Three. Um, I I generally tend to. I came from the V8 school, so it was the making the transition was kind of it was a little different for me. So I went from knowing okay, spark, fuel, ignition, coolant this to this sensor tells the computer to do this and it <laughs> tells hard. it to do yeah. this at this time yeah. so you have to i went completely over to that and it was uh it was a mind it was a mind blower for me it's, i mean i had brain computer burn for stuff weeks. than it is turning wrenches you oh know? yeah it tells right. you where to turn the wrench that's right yeah. and if you turn it wrong you mm -hmm. know it in a short period of time <laughs> that's a good stuff absolutely do you do motorcycles too or just cars yeah bikes and what, bikes what kind of bikes you uh, right now, I'm riding a uh, Honda CBR 1100 uh, XX Blackbird. I've had her for probably about five years, six years. And you refer to it as her, as in like a boat? Uh, yeah. What's her yeah, name? A, yeah. And it, well, I, I don't know if I really refer to it as a... She doesn't really... I don't use the name that much. It's just... It's okay. Uh, it's all right. We're not making fun of you. No, they're not making they're fun just, of me. They're just learning stuff right here. They're not they've making never fun of me. Heard before. 
no, I just no. The, there's a reason behind that. See, I I had uh, the first one I had was uh, was a Suzuki. That was Lucy, and then after that there was um, I had uh, Lucy for Charlotte, and Charlotte was a Hayabusa that just about Killed you. put me down. Well, it, it it put me down for a while, um, and then uh, I got this one, and this one I I just off the top of the head I named it Selena. Um, I guess the reason why I name them is because to me motorcycles are a lot like horses. When you're driving a car, it's not the same. When you're on a motorcycle, it's every every little input's like you're riding a horse. Every little input or when you lean forward or you, this way or that everything. way, it affects mm -hmm. the balance, it affects your uh movement, it affects the bike. So, you know, and then my grandfather was, you know, was a horse guy. So I was like, you know, but it just kind of trickled down. So you ride the iron horse now. Yeah, that's so. right, the iron horse, iron and plastic. Do you have a Harley by any chance? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, next. I have ridden them. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, where are you from, Joe? Where am I from? <clears throat> well, um, I was born in Perth Amboy, New Jersey. Um, I uh, grew up in New Jersey until I was about six or seven, and then I came down here to Florida, and. Um, Went back there on occasion every now and then, um, but for the most part, um, I stayed like in the Newport Ritchie area. Um, when I was a, when I was a kid, I got into the music thing very early. My my father was an electronics technician, and he was very he was an audio head, kind of like an audiophile. Mm -hmm. So I was exposed to music at a very young age. Um, was when you say you were exposed to, did he listen to a lot of uh, music, or was he a musician also? He wasn't a musician. He was a um, he wanted to do it, but uh, because of the circumstances, it didn't really pan out for him. Mm -hmm. um, he enjoyed drums a lot. He enjoyed piano a lot. Um, he used to uh, spin Floyd Kramer and uh, Eddie Haywood and guys like that, and try to get me involved in keyboards. And uh, I was involved in keyboards for a while when I was a kid, but I made the transition to bass kind of, um, it was it was one of those things where it was a, I don't want to say a, a, a spite thing, but it was like, I, I was, a, <laughs> story being, I, I was a kid, my mother had a Hammond organ in the, in the living room, and um, I used to like to, you know, mess around with it when I was a kid. But it was all tubes, so I, after a while, I kind of figured out that hey, if you if you stick a screwdriver in here and you turn this this way and you turn that that way, and you, you know what I'm talking about Ralph, right? You turn it, you know, old, uh, you you get all these really cool kind of crazy sounds out of it. Well, I love doing that, you know. So here I was taking organ lessons and messing with the organ and you know messing around with the Leslie and stuff. And then all of a sudden I went to school one day, and then when I came home from school, the Hammond and the Leslie and the um, speakers were gone. And in the place of it was this little Wurlitzer combo, like dual manual, touch, one touch organ uh -huh, thing. that did everything. <laughs> and I was just, after that point, I was like, oh, you know, I just kind of lost interest. And then my friends on the block were, you know putting a band together and they're like well why don't you play bass and i'm like okay well, what does it involve you know and then after that <laughs> after i got involved with it i was like yeah i wanted to do it more so that's pretty much the story in a nutshell you know? cool. um who was the getaway sticks well <laughs> that's a that's interesting um when uh when i first started uh thinking about putting a band together um, I was really, really into alternative and I really liked playing it and, you know, I like to play and I like to sing a lot. And, uh, I found out that if, um, that with that idiom, it's like, I just kind of f fit into it. So a friend of mine and I, who played guitar said, well, you know, we need to find a drummer. And I was like, Okay, I said, there's one that I know of that'd be perfect for this gen. Then I called who? Mike. Uh, who, I wonder. <laughs> and uh, so then so then I called, you know, I called Mike on the phone. And it was just like, you know, it was an instant, it, it, it was an instant uh, gel between the three of us. But uh, the, the project is still 
hanging in the rafters. It's just kind it's of one the of those second that, band type thing, right? Well, no, it's a, it's a, it's a hanging in the rafters type thing. Um, Mike works with a um, he's got an alternative band uh, called Wellwisher that he works, and they're an all they're an original alternative band, and um, I think that uh, somewhere soon here I'm probably be involved in that a little bit. Very so cool. it's, I still. You know, I still do that. You know, there you get, play with a pick. You know, do the rock thing. So you're, you're a pretty versatile guy, then. Yeah, I got. I was. I was trained as trained as a jazz musician, and then um, to recap what I was talking about before, I was in college, and I came from a different school of things. I came from the Euro Euro pop slash Euro jazz kind of progressive jazz mm-hmm. movement. So I was really into bands like Brand X and Soft Machine and like that. Mm -hmm. So when I went to college, um, everybody was like, man, you sound like Jocko. And I'm like, Jocko who? (laughs) And I'm like, Jocko what? You know, and then then somebody whips out an old issue guitar player and he was this little, this guy with this, you know, frizzy hair. And I was like, you know, playing a jazz bass that was all like tainted and torn. And I'm like, I got to hear this. And the guy put me on a Weather Report album, and I was like, this is unbelievable. I mean, he was doing things so far ahead of his time. Uh-huh. You it's know, more like a fusion-type jazz, right? Fusion, mm-hmm. yeah. So then after I was doing that, I played with quite a few bands up, and then I was I went to college at uh, Robert Bellarmine University, University of Louisville, mm-hmm. in general at Louisville, Kentucky. So a lot of the bands there were very, very eclectic. Like, they had all these different things going on and um, I was a part of a band that uh, did exactly that they were called the difference and all they did was like King Crimson Peter Gabriel mm-hmm. talking love, love heads that stuff. love that stuff things yeah. like that and that's all good stuff yeah. yeah and I just I got so enveloped into that sound and I got into the fretless sound and it just kind of went from there. You liked it. I dug it. I dug it. It was, yeah, it was definitely, definitely boss. Yeah. Mike, uh, how long have you been playing drums? Good question. Um, you can count on both hands. 20, 20 years. 20 since years? Since I was 10 years old. Very cool. Very cool. And you, you learned from a couple buckets. <laughs> or what did you have going yeah, on there? Well, it, oddly <laughs> enough, you know, a lot of kids want to learn how to play the drums, but sure. it's like a pretty significant investment to have a drum set sure. and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my father played. So growing up, you know, we always had drums in the house. So, you know, he would teach me some stuff here and there when I was young. And then when I was 10, I started taking formal lessons. Like in a musical background like her. And you, yeah. 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 And my mom played piano as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so musical family and, you know, I, I took lessons on and off between the time I was 10 and 18. Where are you from? Uh, I grew up in Spring Hill, Florida, oh. about an hour north of here. Yeah, it's a suburb of Port Ritchie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's one way to put the, it. The burbs. <laughs> it's the burbs. What the was burbs. the first concert you've ever went to? Oh, good question. Uh, Carlos Santana. Where at? Uh, the Well, at that time it was known as the Ice Palace, now the Tampa Bay yep. Times Forum. Yeah, very cool. I love Carlos. <laughs> yeah, it was great. He gets the... What, twenty-one piece band yeah. behind him, a percussion. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you know, yeah. Good, good first concert. Good stuff. Were you gonna say something? No. Oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you you went towards the mic. I thought you were gonna say, but that's okay. Just sit back and relax, John. Uh, I'm just rocking. We're just we're, yeah. We're just trying to make I love they put a rocking <laughs> chair in here. Mike, what's the largest crowd you've ever played for? Oh gosh. Uh, you know, one time when I was in high school, um, I played for this uh, like youth rally. At uh, at the Ice Palace, and I mean, it was a pretty large crowd. It wasn't like a packed house or anything. Mm-hmm. They just had like the first level open. But I would say that's probably the largest crowd I played. It's kind of like a hockey game there. Uh, yeah, that's how many yeah, people there. Yeah. Well, there? no, no, not not, not twenty thousand. Probably <laughs> like five thousand. Yeah. Do you have a Facebook? Uh, no, I didn't think you did. <laughs> why? Why you trying to look me up? <laughs> you're not there. <laughs> he said, "Yeah, so you're, not, you're not there." I'm on, yeah. otherwise, I'm on just, LinkedIn though. <laughs> otherwise, if you don't give me any information, I just pull stuff out uh, of the attic. Okay, that's what I thought. And how long was your stint in uh, the prison? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've never been to prison. I swear. <laughs> I read it on Facebook. You were. <laughs> nope, not who's, me. Mike, who's, your, fa- not who's your favorite drummer? Um, uh, that's a good question. I mean, uh, my all-time Go favorite. Burn, well, burn. let me. Uh, let me. An- I'm not going to 100% answer your question. I'll, but I'll, I'll get to the point. So, 
growing up, one of my big influences during the time when I was really honing my style was Carter Beaufort from Dave Matthews Band. So that's like one of my big influences that has really influenced the way that I play drums. Um, but I'd have to say my favorite drummer is Antonio Sanchez, who plays with Pat Metheny. Mm -hmm. um, he's the, like literally the one drummer that I've been exposed to where I just don't know what that guy's doing. You know, like most drummers, I listen to it. I'm like, OK, like I can do that. You mm -hmm. know, it makes sense. When I listen to him, I don't know what he's doing. And you and watch him until, or no, no. I mean, well, it's yeah, yeah, to a certain extent, but it's still. I think a better way to put it is, I cannot replicate a lot of what that guy plays, and um, that's what makes him very interesting to listen to for me. Cool. Um, playing different venues, do you feel more energy from the different crowds, and why do you think that is? I mean, like if you go into one bar, you got a crowd coming out there, and and you know everybody's just doing their thing, not even listening to the band. Then you got another one where everybody's like up at the stage watching you. Mm -hmm. You get different energies from different crowds, correct? Um, Yeah, yeah, I do. And I'd say to a certain extent on this topic, I might differ from the rest of the band where, you know, for me, I, I kind of play music more for myself, you mm -hmm. know, and if yeah. I'm into what I'm playing, you know, if the crowd's into it, it's a plus. Mm -hmm. But if they're not, that's cool too. I'm still having a good time, you know? Cool. Yeah, that's good. Um, I'm, Thank, thanks a lot. Raphael. Yes, hello. Good evening. <laughs> good, evening. <laughs> yeah, that good evening. Good evening. You have a better Lugosi yeah. voice there. Are you the, you're the newest member of, of Soul Mace Island? I you? am, and, and I had a very interesting first gig. Did you? <laughs> yes. Tell us about Was it the woodshed incident? No. You're not it, supposed it to tell stuff like that. <laughs> New Year's Eve party at a 55 and up retirement community. Wow. And let me tell you, those retirees can party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did you get hit on? <laughs> yeah, did you get hit on? <laughs> I did not. I did not. You're disappointed the about that. Yeah, the chick with the walker. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even want to say anything. But, uh, he didn't uh, want to notice. To admit. Scotland, very exotic. <laughs> you were in a band that long ago called The Human Condition. Am I correct? Correct. Um, all original band uh, led by the, the super talented Dean Johannesson, who is currently doing a solo thing this year. Um, what kind of music do they play? Is it? Like jazz type it was all original and it was uh acoustic fronted it was kind of like the best way i can describe it without but what the people can understand conceptualize is, is like a ben harper or dave matthews or wallflowers See. very rootsy very um i, I hear a lot of earthy. influence from the dave matthews uh all, all three guys um, yeah they're good yeah yeah he, uh, but fa <laughs> fabulous songwriter dean, dean is an excellent songwriter very human stories very personal very accessible by anybody how did you hook up with Soulmate Smile? And did they find you in an ad or something? Jo or? Joe and I worked together. Okay. Um, and actually, I took a long hiatus from playing keys for a while and took up bass because I love a, a real. My favorite part of music is the rhythm section. I'm a a, a uh, wannabe drummer and and a wannabe bass player. You know, that's so I, it's better than saying I am a drummer. And you can't do it. You know? So I, I took up <laughs> I took up bass because I love it and to, to, to get gigs playing bass. And I, Joe was at the break room. Um, looking at some base some website, I'm like, hey, you play bass, and that's how we met. Very cool. Uh, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you while you were on stage? <laughs> did you go? On, did you play biker events or anything like that? No, I didn't play it at the at nudist colony once, though. Yeah. Well, that was pretty crazy. There's like a bunch of raisins out there. It, it was like a bunch of raisins. Yeah. Did you get hit on? <laughs> yeah, did you get hit on there? I definitely not get hit with a walker. <laughs> The went, same one. She, she's following <laughs> you around. She's and we your were, stalker. And we were dressed, actually. Most of the band was, was the dressed until about the, they're, they're, until about the third set. And then the uh, percussion player dropped trow and the uh, drummer uh, dropped trow. Right. You guys are getting into <laughs> it. And you the, hey, you know, there's nothing it. worse than a stalker with a walker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Their 55 and older crowd just tuned out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, they just tuned, They just called their neighbors to tune in, I guess, you know. <laughs> I'm going to be lighting up the boards here in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the boards are too It's going to be off the scale. You know, I want to, too bad, I'm out of time and I don't get to hear you guys play another tune. I wish I did. I mean, you played on the, the show prior to me. Uh, we're just out of time. Sorry. Are you guys on Facebook? Yeah, yep. yeah. they are. How do you find now, How do you find you on Facebook? Because I was having trouble and I want to make sure that people it, can it's find a, you. It's on there. Now you guys, if anybody's listening, if anybody's listening at all, <laughs> you get to you get to see Soulmate That's smiling at uh, the Christina Ann Coolidge event at Seaside. That's at fifty three thirty Treadway Avenue, right next to Hooters. There, and they're having a pig roast, fifty fifty a silent auction. That'll be January twenty sixth from twelve to seven. And I think Soulmate Smiling is going on at noon on the inside stage. Yeah. 
uh, outside sure. stage, outside 12 stage. to one thirty. Okay, very cool. Uh, the band lineup there, if uh, Jeffrey still has the same amount of band there, no. so inside will we kick off with Tim Cronin at noon, Zigzag uh, at one thirty, Emory Brothers Band at 3 p.m., Shinebox Live at 5 p.m., The Beach Billies at 8 p.m., Outside Stage, Soulmates Mile at noon, definitely have to go out and see them, Strung Over at 2 p.m. If you like the Dave Matthews, they kind of lead towards the Dave Have you heard Strung Over yet, Jeremiah Bullfrog? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good, very good. You'll love those guys. Uh Rick Stutes at 4 p.m., the Blue Riders at 5.30. And we want to thank all the bands for donating their time uh, to come and play. Uh, it makes a difference for Christina's family. Christina was a uh, uh, dispatcher for the Newport Ritchie Police. The Port Ritchie. Port Ritchie Port Police. Ritchie Police. And, uh, she left, died all of a sudden. Left a smile. Uh, left, a, left a family left, behind. Yeah, left a family behind. And it's kind of very tragic. A um, couple other things coming up. What were they, Jim? Uh, Dina Nichols' band at... The Sandbar this Friday night, uh, Dino Nichols Rocking Country. That's a Sandbar uh, on uh, what's US the, 19, right, of Flora. Flora? F- right across Flora from Flora Mar. Okay, Flora Mar. If you were coming out of Gulf Harbors and you had a really good buzz and you forgot <laughs> to turn on 19 <laughs> and you went straight across, just park your car, come on in and get more of a buzz. Have you had experience that's with that sandbar. before, Jim? You sound like that's a perfect directions for you to give. That's how I found the place. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Also going on Friday night at the um, the State Theater in, in uh, St. Petersburg is J- uh, the Jackal Show. And appearing there, my good friends, uh, Love Dogs, are going to be there. And get out and see the Love Dogs. Uh, yeah, some... so if you're not coming to Dean and Nichols, you better go down there. Yeah, you better. It's... No excuses. You no, guys aren't playing no Friday, right? Oh, are you? Where you guys are? Where are you guys at Friday? Got to be at one of these gigs or nowhere. <laughs> we'll find out real quick. Yeah, you got to hurry. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. I made you move around enough, so I kind of punished okay. you for that. All right, we're uh, on the eleventh. We're at twenty second. Thank you very much. No, wait. Further than that. Twenty sixth. We're at Incognito and Apollo Beach. That's Saturday. Yes. Okay. Short Friday. Incognito and Apollo Beach. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, cool. okay, Friday night, mm-hmm. either Dean and Nichols mm-hmm. Band at Sandbar or down at the Jackal Show with the Love Dogs at the State Theater. The State Theater, huh? Mm-hmm. Awesome. We're out of time for now. Uh, let's get out there and see uh, so, so, Soulmate Smiling. I'm sorry. See Soulmate Smiling at the, at the Seaside there uh, Sunday night. And uh, there are many ba- ways of finding out what's going on in the Tampa Bay area here. There's Where's the Party? She has a show on Thursday night. Her name is Charlene. And she'll tell you what's going on right here on Rock Slam Radio. Uh, there's a website you can go to, uh, gotonight.com, and they have everything on there that within a 50 mile radius, 25 mile radius, 10 mile radius, and you can find out what's going on, who's playing, and where they're playing at. Uh, so get out there and support live music and the venues that support them. My next week's guest will be the Quitters, and thank you very much for listening, and thank you very much. So if smiling. they show up, thanks for having us. <laughs> thanks for having us. They might quit. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, folks. Take care. (laughs) You've been listening to the T-Bones Rock Show only on rockslamradio.com.